Present greetings, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you all in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our soon and coming mighty King. I pray you all well in Jesus' mighty precious name. Brothers and sisters, there's a few things on my heart and the Lord has told me to one, uh, confess, testify, and um, just encourage the body of Christ. Amen. Now, first of all, you know, I give God glory for the comments and the messages that the brothers and sisters send, um, the testimonies. Amen. We give thanks for that, for it's encouraging and empowering to the body of Christ and myself also to confirm a lot of the things that the Lord tells me to speak. Brothers and sisters, we must understand, amen, that if I say the sky looks yellow, you cannot just say, oh, the sky is yellow because Brother Francois says so. Amen. You have to go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, Brother Francois said that you told him that the sky is yellow. Is the sky really yellow? And then the Lord will confirm to you that the sky is yellow or he will say, no, it's blue. It's only yellow where he is or he's colorblind. He doesn't you understand. Go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Because we need to know the Lord for ourselves. Yes, the Lord appointed preachers and teachers and prophets and evangelists and ministers and, and all these things and missionaries to share the word of God. Yes. But we are to know the Lord for ourselves and know the word for ourselves. Amen. Note that the disciples didn't just follow around Jesus until he left. The disciples did not follow around Jesus until he left. Jesus sent them two by two. Why? Because they learned and they got enough knowledge and wisdom and the Holy Spirit now. No, the Holy Spirit came after Jesus left. But they got enough knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Word of God to go and share it. Amen? They didn't follow around Jesus every day. So it's good to sit and listen to a message. It's good to share a message. It's good to listen to a rapture dream or a one ceremony online. But you cannot just be taking everything that you're learning from online. You have to go to the Lord yourself. Amen. This channel is called Anchored Remnant. Amen. You are anchored in Christ. I cannot anchor you. You have to be anchored by your own connection to the Holy Spirit. I'm only teaching you how the Lord has anchored me and sharing what he's given me to share with the body of Christ. Amen. This channel is called the Bride of Christ, meaning you have to have your own oil in your lamp. My oil cannot get you through the wedding banquet. You have to have your extra oil. So I'm trying to teach you how the Lord has taught me to fill my lamp with oil so you can also fill your lamp with oil. Amen. I was right. I wrote my first book, Glory to God. And upon writing the second book, the middle of the pandemic started, I realized this book is going to be about three or four times bigger than my first book. And one day while I was writing, the Lord just told me, stop. He said, you don't have time to finish this book. The time that you're taking to write this book and then publish it a year or two later, record these messages and publish them online. Send them up on YouTube. They will reach far more people than by the time you finish your book because time is short. And I was like, yeah, but Lord, I did volume one. This is volume two. He's like, listen, you should have finished volume two already. You took long. Now the time is short. That book should have already been published. You took your time. Now I'm trying to tell you the time is up. Go and preach those messages instead of trying to write them in your book. And this is why I stopped writing my book. And some of these messages are what was meant to go in my book. But a lot of them, the Lord gave me in the morning while I was praying. Or the night before when I was praying. Or when I woke up or he spoke to me while I was in the shower. And it's like, I want you to put this together and deliver it to my people through, through your YouTube channel. Uh, amen. The Lord is giving me stuff to share. But we have to know the Lord ourselves. Amen. God is not an author of confusion. I had a brother, a brother or a sister in Christ, they come and they said, Oh, but Brother Francois, you said that the V-A-K-K-S-I-N-N-A-T-I-O-N is the mark. I know another person on YouTube said it's not. I'm confused. Beloved, God is not the author of confusion. That's from the enemy. Amen. Anything that you're not aware about, take it to the Lord in prayer. It's simple as this. Lord, X, Y, Z said it's the mark and Z, Y, X is not the mark. What are you saying to me, Lord? Is it or is it not? And the Lord will reveal it to you. The Lord speaks to his people. I remember one time I was like, Lord, what do you want me to cook tomorrow? Just, you know, it's because I like to be that close to the Lord. I don't walk, eat, think, cook. I try to do everything that the Holy Spirit wants me to do. And I had a dream that I saw, I went shopping and I had, um... A bag of groceries outside my front door and I could see yam sticking out. So I know the Lord wanted me to cook like yam and pumpkin and stuff like that. 
Another time I was like, Lord, what, what should I cook tomorrow? And I had a dream that I was in the fish shop buying fish. Another time I said, Lord, where, where, where should I buy my fruits? Because there's a local shop next to me. But he said, no, go to Harsden and buy the fruits that are getting shipped from Jamaica. So we can't ask the Lord for confirmation. The Bible says, try the spirits. When the Bible says, try the spirits, brothers and sisters, it did not say, if Brother Francois said this to Mark, go and argue with him. It means, take what he said to the Lord in prayer. That's how you try the spirits. You don't argue back and forth, back and forth with the word of God. That's demonic. That's what the enemy, that's what the devil tried to do with Jesus. He tried to argue with Jesus with the word of God. So you have to be careful. Not everyone that quotes scripture is quoting it from the Holy Spirit. That's why a lot of these theologians don't know Jesus. They don't have the Holy Spirit and they left Christianity because they are taught what a man thinks. They're not taught by somebody who's been taught by the Holy Spirit. That's why they come with this one save, always save stuff. When the Bible says you must die to your flesh daily. Why? Because the flesh causes you to sin. So you must crucify the flesh daily. Should we continue in sin through grace abound? God forbids. And there's so many scriptures that tell us there is no one saved, always saved. But because they're taught by someone who don't have the Holy Spirit, they've been deceived and they're deceiving also. That's why the Bible says the blind cannot lead the blind. Amen. It's like one person preached, oh, Jesus was hung on a cross. Another person's going to preach and say, oh, Jesus was hung on a tree. Now you're going to be like, oh, I'm confused. Was he hung on a cross or a tree? The Bible's so confusing. It's not confusing. Bring it to the Lord to, in prayer and the Lord will reveal to you that the cross was made out of a tree. The wood from the cross was from a tree. That's all it was saying. doesn't mean that it's contradicting each other. But don't be sitting there confused. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we must pray fast, read our Bible and get close to the Lord so he can speak to us ourselves. Amen. So I just want to clear that up. Just bring things to the Lord in prayer. Go to him for confirmation. Don't call your cousin or your virgin and be like, yo, you know, I heard someone say X, Y, Z. What do you think? No, go to the Lord on your prayer and say, Lord, what do you, what are you saying? Because what you think or what I think doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what the Lord said. That's it. And we have to go to the Lord in prayer. I'll give you a glory for some of the people that have rapture dreams and they're all over the place right now. Thousands and thousands of rapture dreams. I'll give you a glory. But yesterday, you was in the club. The day before, you're drinking and smoking. All of a sudden, you have a rapture dream and you want to come online and preach the whole Bible. Have you even finished repenting? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible says anyone who teaches this word must live this word. So I give God glory that you're encouraged to share. But how can you share what you don't know? And people sit there and be like, oh, they had a rapture dream. That means God's speaking to them. Everything they say has to be true. No, it doesn't have to be. And this is why the God's Lord said to try the spirits. Which means take what they say to the Lord in prayer. Look for the fruits. By their fruits, you shall know them. Are they easily angry? Are they easily offended? Do they lie? Do they steal? Do they sin? Or are they walking in love, peace, joy? Do they walk in the fruits of the spirit or the fruits of the flesh? By their fruits you shall know them. Amen? So if you have a rapture dream, yes, share it. And if the Lord gives you a word, yes, share it. But don't just make an account and come online and just start talking everything that you think, I think, and I think, and in my opinion, in my opinion, we're not allowed to preach our opinion and we're not allowed to preach what we think. We're only allowed to preach what, preach what the Lord says. Amen? Brothers and sisters, I don't want anyone to sit there and be like, okay, tomorrow at dinner time, I'm going to watch a video from Anchored Remnant in Christ and the Lord's going to speak to me. No, speak to the Lord while you're cooking, while you're eating, in the morning. Because brothers and sisters, the time is going to come. The Lord already showed me. There's going to be no more internet, no more online, no more church gatherings, no more preaching. And they were beginning starting to do it one nation, one country at a time. So it's not for you to just come here and watch these videos and be like, I'll watch another one tomorrow. If I speak about fasting, say to the Lord, Lord, Holy Spirit, please teach me how to fast. If I speak about dressing holy, go to the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, please teach me how to dress holy. If I speak about prayer, say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray for longer. If I speak about sin, say, Holy Spirit, can you reveal to me the things that are causing me to sin to block me away from you? Empty my vessel of sin so I could be fooled by the Holy Spirit. Please, brothers and sisters, 
The Bible says iron sharpen iron. But you have to be sharp to sharpen somebody. You can't just be sharpened and be sharpened. It's a two-headed sword. It works both ways. Amen. I want you all to be strong. I don't want 10,000 followers. I don't want no followers. Follow Jesus. Don't even follow me. I got love for my people on YouTube. This is why I say brothers and sisters because that's what you are to me. And I want my brothers and sisters to be strong as I am in Christ or even stronger. My heart rejoices when someone comes in the comment and they be like, yeah, I fast a lot. Yeah, I pray a lot. Yeah, this is what the Lord said to me. This is what the Lord revealed to me. I give you glory because this is what I want. My brothers and sisters to be strong. So that even if I don't, if I come offline tomorrow, you don't need to go, oh, what did Brother Francois say again? You know for yourself. Seek the Lord. Amen. The Lord wanted to be strong. Rule leaders, raise up leaders, not followers. I don't want no one to follow. I want you all to be leaders. Strong and mighty women and prophetesses of God. Men of mighty valor, men of God. Amen. This is what we want. Filled by the Holy Spirit. And this is why you need to be walking in the Spirit. Because people that are in sin and walking in the flesh, they do not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in a, in a dirty vessel. So how can they come online mixed up in all kinds of sin? Covered in makeup, covered in weave. He's got his hair faded and all his design. He's wearing jewelry and all his stuff. And it's like, yeah, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. That, no. No, brother. No, my sister. The Holy Spirit will not use somebody who's in sin like that. They would use you in like, for example, say it just loves you or share your rapture dream or something. But in terms of prophesying and preaching the whole gospel and breaking it down and the Holy Spirit said to me and he sent me to prophesy. No. The Holy Spirit doesn't go in dirty vessels. You have to repent and cleanse yourself first. And this is serious. This is why so many people are being deceived. you got a pastor or a preacher or a prophetess, sorry, she's online. She got the longest lace weaved down to her back. She got the longest fingernails. She got on. She got on the most lipstick and the most makeup. Talking about the Lord to prophesy that your victory is coming. Your victory is coming, and you shall get your marital spouse. Your marital spouse is coming. The Lord didn't tell you nothing. Stop lying to God's people, because first of all, your weave and your fingernail is is attached to marine spirits. So you have marine spirits. So how is the Lord speaking through you? Marine spirits are speaking through you. That's like how the devil knows the Bible and he preached it to Jesus. Try to deceive the Lord. Some of these men of God, they got the biggest part in and the skin fade. And the fade so on sleek and they got their ring and their chains. And their Louis Vuitton and their Gucci and all this demonic clothing. Talking about, oh, the Holy Spirit said and the Holy Spirit said and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't say nothing to you. Familiar spirits said something to you. Brothers and sisters, do not know that the devil has people on the pulpit that are trained in the marine kingdom. People that are trained through theology. People who are born and bred by the devil as demons to come and deceive the gospel. To speak false gospel and false doctrines to try to get it to contaminate the true gospel. And this is what I'm saying. Know the Holy Spirit for yourself. So that when somebody comes and says, thus saith the Lord, you can say, wait. Ain't no Holy Spirit in you. I can't feel the Holy Spirit when you're speaking. That's all fake. Jesus said, do not be deceived. Many false Christ shall come. Many false prophets, many false preachers, many false teachers. They're all over the place. Trying to hustle money. And lead God's people astray. Oh, once saved, always saved. Oh, Jesus Christ is coming back for everybody that's a Christian. All these lies. How is he coming back for everybody that's a Christian? How is it once saved, always saved? When there's five virgins and five got taken and five got left. Well, they took all ten then. Why was the man that was dressed properly that came to the wedding banquet got kicked out of front of the darkest and out of fire? Because of how he was dressed. But none of these things don't matter. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to go too much into it, but the Lord told me to speak my heart today. And when I come online and I see somebody preaching the true gospel of God, I give God glory. When I see somebody preaching false doctrines and lies, my heart gets heavy because I'm like, oh my God. The babes in Christ, the people that don't understand the word, they're going to be deceived. I have to pray against it. So let us walk in the spirit, amen. Have discernment, amen. And know the Lord for ourselves. 
because the Lord loves you. Don't you ever, ever sit there and think, oh, the Lord loves Brother Francois more than he loves me. This is why the Lord speaks to him more than me. The Lord wants to speak to you. But are you giving space for him? Are you always on TV, always, always online, always on your phone, always gossiping, always certain? Where is the Lord meant to find space? You have to separate time. The Bible says, meditate on my word. Sit there in silence with you and God's word. Yes, there are some people that are chosen, brothers and sisters. It says, from your, in your mother's womb, I know thee. And I've ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Some of us are marked. I was born, when I came out my mother's womb, glory to God, I was in the sack. And then I had another sack wrapped around my head. And then there was another sack wrapped around my eyes. Amen. So I was in three them sacks in the womb. I was in three of them. Amen. And the, the doctor did say to my mom, if you have another child, you will die in childbirth and your child will die. Even my father was like, listen, don't have this baby because you're going to lose. I don't want you to die and the baby. And my mom had faith even though she wasn't Christian then, but she said, I'm having my son. Amen. So the Lord knew that he had chosen me if I was in my mother's womb and he covered me in a sack and he covered my head in another sack and he covered my, it was like three skins. They had to peel me out the one with the water. Then they had to peel this other one off my head and peel this other one off my eyes because I was covered and I was chosen from my mother's womb. But that doesn't mean that I was five years old, seven years old, ten years old reading the gospel. I had to get close to the Lord. I didn't get saved till I was in my twenties or something. And yes, there was times when I was so lost in the world, I put my 9mm beretta in my mouth and I wanted to take my head back all out. But my finger couldn't squeeze the trigger. I put my shotgun in my stomach. I pushed it right up underneath my ribs where my heart was. And I wanted to press that trigger. And something was just holding my finger back. I couldn't do it. I've crushed over 200 tablets. Like, crushed them. Crushed them in terms of because you can't chew 200 tablets it don't work so I crushed them all up to powder and then I scooped it into a cup, poured water on it, drank it I didn't even feel like I I just knew that the Lord had his hand in my stomach holding all those things from getting to my organs to shut it down because I felt my organs, my heart trying to stop beating my lungs trying to stop working, my kidneys I felt everything was shutting down in there so the Lord has been keeping me. They've tried to kill me. They've tried to shoot me. They've, they've car accidents, uh, motorbike accidents, almost been, almost been electrocuted. So many things. I remember one time when I tried to overdose on, on some tablets and because the world's closing in on you. You don't want to go and kill everybody you know, so you want to, the devil turns you on yourself. And I ate how many tablets? And I thought I could just walk to my bedroom and just lie on my bed and die on my bed peacefully like in the movies that's not how it works I took about two steps from the kitchen that's where I took the tablets and I fell Brudum. I saw this bright bright light like if the, if the place was in darkness and you flick the light on and flick it back off bright light flashed and then I heard a voice say to me your phone fell by your by your by your um your TV set pick it up Call 911, 999, whatever the number was at the time. And as I picked it up and I called this number, I heard a voice say to me again, open your front door because you're going to fall again. And as I dialed it and I said, I don't know if I told them my address, I don't know if they tracked the phone, but I opened the front door and I fell again. I believe the Holy Spirit took me to make the call and to open the door because they would have got there and wouldn't have been able to get inside. And I woke up the next day, this was about in the evening. The next day I woke up in the midday in the hospital with all kind of patches stuck to my chest. And as I opened my eyes, I know the Lord said to me, my son, if I allowed you to commit suicide, you'd run away from a problem in the physical realm and run into a problem in the spiritual realm that you would not be able to get out of. Meaning, you would have died and went to hell because murder is not your choice. Thou shalt not kill, not even your own life is not yours. It's been bought by my precious blood. You're not allowed to kill yourself or anyone else. And when I heard the Lord speak to me, my, my energy level was on about 2%. I 
And when I heard him say that he would not allow me to kill myself because I will have a problem from a physical realm and go to one of the spiritual realm that I cannot ever come back out of, my energy level went to about 40%. And I started to rip these things off my chest. And I remember the doctor looked at me like, what are you doing? And I was like, I lied to him. Actually, I wasn't even saved, so I lied anyway. I was like, I'm going to the toilet. But I wasn't going to the toilet. I was going home. I found myself out in the street, in the hospital robe thing, just staggering around. I called one of my boys like, yo, you need to come get me now. He's like, where you at? I'm like, I don't even know. Eventually come and got me and I went home. I started to really look at my life and be like, oh my days, the Lord will protect me for so many things. Maybe I am called to preach this gospel or something. And the Lord began to work on me. Brothers and sisters, some of us is chosen like that, but did I wake up the, the week after that or the month after that preaching the gospel? No. I had to pray, I had to fast, I had to seek the Lord. And this is what we need to be doing. Amen? Giving place for the Lord to work in our lives. Anyone you see out there with, filled with the Holy Spirit and sharing the word of God, they're making space. God don't just go to them and be like, oh, preach this message while they're watching TV. Or they go, oh, what I used to do is like, oh, I'll go to sleep, I pray to the Lord my soul will keep. If I die before I wake, I pray to the, the Lord my soul he take. That's the prayer that I teach to my kids, they're little. Three years old, five years old, seven years old, nine years old. The nine year old have to pray more than that now. To, but I'm just saying, we're too big for that. We must pray fervently. Amen. Jesus prayed, prayed, prayed. He left his friends and went to pray. How many times did he leave the crowd and go separately to go and pray with God? Same with Moses. He left the crowd and go to God. We have to leave the crowd. We have to leave television and all this sinful stuff and go to God. And he will give us strength. Amen. Because the Lord loves us. The Lord loves you. So much. And we need to understand how much the Lord loves us. And put this love into action. If I say to you, if you're ever hungry, call me and I'll feed you. If you don't call me and you're hungry, that's your business. If I have a car and I say, if you ever get stranded in the rain, phone me, I'll come pick you up. And you're walking through the rain, not phoning me, that's your business. The Lord done his part. He's loving, he's merciful. He's sending his son down on the cross to die for our forgiveness. He did everything that he's supposed to do. You meant to do your part. So... Brothers and sisters, I'm going to go through a few scriptures that I call the Lord's His Hidden Love Letter. Amen. So put your seatbelts on. Bear with me through this message. It's already gone 20 minutes, 22 minutes, and I really hope that first bit would have took five minutes, but the Holy Spirit led me to spoke about some things because I don't even like to share my testimony sometimes about the gangs and the guns and the prison and the drugs and the suicidal one. And, and just for you know as well, I was that suicidal because my baby mom wouldn't let me see my child. That's why I was so angry and suicidal because all I ever wanted was to be in a proper family because I grew up in a broken family. And I said, when I have a child, I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to be a family man. And they just kept trying to stop me from seeing my child. And it broke me. It broke me. So, daughters of Zion, unless your child is in danger at their daddy's house, the Lord is going to hold you accountable from stopping your child from, your, your child from seeing their father. And if the father lives with the if the child lives with the father and he's stopping the child from seeing the mother, brother, you'll be held accountable. Don't. It's two parents. That's why one person can't get pregnant by themselves. A father can't be a mother and a mother can't be a father. They need both. And a lot of these broken children in society are growing without dads and growing without mums, and they just it needs to stop. Now if your child is going to your father's the father's house and the father's giving them a spliff. Or saying, come take coke with daddy. And you say, no, you're not going. That's fair enough. But organize a center or something. Or, or let them go do a course or something. But know what you're doing. I remember once I put my gun in, in, in one of my baby mom's mouth to lift her head off. Because when I was seven years old, somebody done that to me. They put their gun in my mouth to blow my head off because they wanted to rob my dad. Salt for taste is ugh. So when I was growing up and I was a criminal, my favorite thing to do was to put my gun in somebody's mouth. Childhood revenge. Because she gave me a child that wasn't mine. I took the child to Jamaica, introduced the child to my family members. No one wanted to talk to the child. Then when I came back to do the DNA paper and I filled it out and she filled it out, she whipped it up in front of my face. And I got so angry, I just put my gun in her mouth. I said, listen, just give me, give me a reason. 
Give me a reason. Another time, I wanted to make my, see my child and my baby mama's playing stupid and all this stupid enough. I'm trying to get my child to go to see her, uh, her brother and she's telling me, oh, you're not going and blah, blah, blah. After I already told them I'm taking them out for the day and they all got dressed and ready and they're not meant to be going. And they're telling me, kill me, kill me, kill me. I'm like, oh, why would I kill you? You're the, no. This is my other baby. And I'm like, no. And I got so angry, I put my machete underneath her throat because she didn't know I had it in my back at the time. Remember, I was offici offici officially... A certified gang member I was always tooled up with a gun or a knife or two guns and two knives or so I've always had weapons I'm not proud of it but this is who I was this is what I lived because I was angry about not seeing my child and I was gonna chop her head off her body don't play when it comes to my kids taking them out taking them library yeah I was a criminal I was a nasty person but when it came to a father I didn't introduce them things to them Trying to teach them how to read and how to spell and to have fun and ride their bikes and go swimming and I'm trying to be what my father never was. So, like I said, I don't like sharing these testimonies, but the Lord tells me stop holding back. Share them. Because people need to know what I take you from. They come in here and they see you and they think you will grew up in a church with your mum and dad, mother and father are prophets and prophetesses. They think that you're special and, and you, you ain't and tell them who you are. This is who I was. This is what the Lord saved me from. This is why I love them so much. I wasn't just a prodigal son. I was lost and drowning and dying in sin. So we need to understand the power of God is real and it's still working. And if it can manifest in my life so much, it can manifest in your life too. But not only by sitting and watching my videos, go and pray about what the Lord is speaking to me about. All these things that I'm sharing and teaching is what the Lord taught me how I how to be strong. So I'm sharing it with you guys so you guys can be strong also. And please don't come in the comment section and start bashing me about how can a man of God put on a gun in his baby mom's mouth. I was a man of God then. I was a criminal. I was a thug. I was a known gangster. I walked with a limp, jewelry, swinging hats. You looked at me and you know don't play with this man. And I was always in numbers. If you don't know my testimony, we was yarding massive, 50 man deep. But the Lord's transformed me into a new creation, hallelujah. I don't look the same. I had my name, Mad Max, written in my eyebrows. That was my name, Mad Max. I was named of the guy in Shutters, if you know about that movie. They named me off of him. Running into danger first. First to kick a door off. First to draw my gun. First to rod my machete. I was lost and crazy. I didn't care if I die, I didn't care if I go to prison. So understand the power of the Lord can transform and change lives. Like Jesus came here and he met his disciples and he transformed and changed their lives. If you come in the comment section instead of seeing the truth in this thing and giving God glory, your comment will be deleted. Because I'm tired of this, this silly behavior in the comment section. Why are you even here? If you don't want to hear the message of the Lord, if you don't want to hear what the Lord is trying to say to the body of Christ, why do you watch these videos just to keep scoffing? I don't mind you calling me a witch and a wizard and a warlock and a false prophet, I'll pray for you. But it gets ridiculous, brothers and sisters, because they come in the comment section and they're like, oh, you're blaspheming, you need to repent because you wrote Christ's name with a dollar sign. I wrote Antichrist's name with a dollar sign. Because the algorithms will take down videos, they've done it before because of stuff like that. So I have to call my messages. And if you know me and you notice my channels, I try to write Christ, Jesus, God in bold. Separate from all the other words. So they didn't even take the time to read the title of the video properly to see that the message said Antichrist. And the reason why I wrote it with the dollar sign is because I wanted to trick the algorithm so they don't take it down. Because the last time I preached about that, they took down the video and I was banned from YouTube for a whole week. So be careful what you're doing in the comment section. The Lord told me already, stop entertaining people because they ask a question, not because they want to know the answer. Not because they're going to go to pray about what the answer told you. About, they don't want to pray about what God told you. They want to go into debate with you. Using their IQ level and their own intelligence to try to depict scripture when they need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And they're not. And their carnal brain can't understand the Holy Spirit. And because their carnal brain can't understand the Holy Spirit, they want to prompt, they want to label you as false and liar. Go to the Holy Spirit. He will teach you. Amen. Sorry brothers and sisters. But the Lord told me today. He told me to, he told me to confess and testify. 
So I'm learning it all out. Amen? But if I continue, I'll be here for hours. And my device only allows me to record for 45 minutes. And then it shuts it off and I have to make a part two. So I'm going to try and fit the rest of this message into the last 15 minutes. Amen? Please don't go nowhere. Please watch. Because the Lord don't only love me. This is the point I was getting at. And a lot of you ain't as bad as I was. Or even if you was worse, the Lord still loves you. And this is why there's a hidden love letter in the word of God. And I'm going to try to go through this. So forgive me if I'm going a little bit quickly because I want to get through all of it before the 15 minutes is up. Amen? Brothers and sisters, Jesus loves you so much. So, so much. You're divinely created. In the image of God. The other day I was looking at my fingers and I was thinking, oh, must the Lord loves us. Do you know that this part of your finger right here is the only part connected to your fingernail that is actually hard? Because that bit doesn't move. But the sides here is actually flexible. Like suspension and hydraulics. Because they move. And just like when it rips here, it hurts a lot. If it was ripping up the side, it would hurt a lot. So the Lord divinely made this part to be flexible while this part is hard. Those that have ears to hear, let them hear what I'm trying to say. The Lord so divinely made us. Our fingerprints is so different. You could have twins, triplets, quadruplets. Your fingerprints will not be the same. Neither will your personality. Billions of people on the planet and we all have different fingerprints. That means we're all individually different. You're special in your own way. Like a jigsaw puzzle, every piece is important to make the whole pitch. The Lord loves you so much. Amen. So I'm going to go through a few scriptures that I call the Lord's hidden love letter in the Bible. And hopefully, brothers and sisters, you can see that all you have to do is just go to the Lord yourself. And he will show you things. Amen. Now Psalms 68, hallelujah. Psalm 68 verse 19. Glory to God. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. The Lord daily, daily loadeth us with benefits. He wakes us up every day. Provides for us, loves us, protects us from things in the spiritual realm that we can't even see. Daily. Amen. The Lord daily loadeth us up with benefits. Amen. That means, that means the Lord is thinking about you every day. How much grace is love that he thinks about. He thinks about us every single day. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God because he thinks about us every single day. Now, 2 Thessalonians 3. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bear me, brothers and sisters, 2 Titillation 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keepeth you from evil. The Bible said, there is a roaring lion seeking who we may devour, always after us. So every hour of the day, the Lord is protecting us from evil because every hour of the day, the devil is after us. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. He's protecting us every hour of the day. Amen. Glory to God. Our Father loves us. He loves you. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Cast your, all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Your burdens, your stress, your depression, your, your, your unforgiveness, your sins, whatever. He says, cast it upon him. Because what? He cares for you. Stresses and depressions and all these things go through our mind every single second of the day. He's saying, cast these things upon you. That means he's thinking about us every second of the day. He's able to be there for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. And it says, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. The Lord says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. The Lord loves you with an everlasting love. Everlasting means forever unending. Just that John 3.16, God so loved the world. He gave his only son. He so loved the world. 
and he loves us with everlasting love. The Lord loves you. He don't only want to speak to me. He want to speak to you too. But you have to make time for him. Amen. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verse 7 says, But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are far more valuable than sparrows. Because the Lord said, If I provide for the birds to water, to drink, and berries to eat on the trees, how much more will I provide for my children? Are you not far more precious to me than birds? And he says, even every hair on your head is numbered. That means, he no, this is number four. This is number 9,026. This is number 13,041. And it's number 807. Every hair on our head is numbered. He knows what number is what number. How much love does he have to have for us to even take the time to notice all even these things? The Lord loves us deeply, my brothers and sisters. We have to accept this love and exercise this love. Amen. John 6, 37. Amen. It says, If a man thirsts, let him come to me. You ever been thirsty in the sun? Those of us from hot countries, when the sun are baking at the sky. And your mouth so dry, you can't even lick your lips. You probably cut yourself because it's so dry. Dehydrated, you feel like you want to faint. You ever been that thirsty? You got no help unless you get some water or some drinks. And you could drink a gallon till your belly flick it like a bus. And you'll say, if you're ever thirsty, come to me. Amen. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsty, come to me. He's declaring his love that he will quench your thirst. What are you thirsty for? Anointing? Power? Deliverance, healing, salvation. If you're thirsty, come to him and he shall fill you. He said, He that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not only will he quench your thirst, but he will give you an everlasting connection to the living running water. You will never be thirsty again. What love is this? Amen. Hallelujah. John 10:10. 10, 10. Glory to God. The thief come not only but to kill, to destroy. But I am come that he might have life. And they might have life more abundantly. Life in your family, your circumstances, your finances, your health. No matter what situation in your life, he's come to give you life. A lot of things are dying. A lot of things are, are, are not the way they should be. And the Lord will say, listen, I'm coming to give you health. I come to give you life, peace, joy, strength. Amen. He says, verse 14 says, for I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and they know and, and I'm known of them, of mine. He knows his sheep. It means he knows his people. Amen. 2027. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Amen. Glory to God. And I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out my hand. We are in the Lord's hands like this. Who can, who can open the Lord's fingers and take us out? But some of us don't want to be in our God in the Lord's hands. We want to be in our own hands. We have to be in his hands. Amen. Glory to God. He knows us. He loves us. The Bible says that he calls us by name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John 14. I've got five minutes left. Holy Spirit, help me make it through this message. John 14 says he's going to prepare a place. Verse 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself where I am. And that you may also be him. He done died for us. He went to make heaven for us with golden buildings and streets of gold and come back to bring us there. Love is great. Amen. 
Matthew 11 verse 28 and 29. Hallelujah. Matthew 11. Matthew 11 verse 28 and 29. It says, Come to me, O leader, are labor and have heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take unto me, take unto you my yoke. For my yoke is light and your burden is heavy. So he say, I know you're carrying things. Don't carry them things. Carry me. They are too heavy for you. I will give you rest. Amen. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. It says, And I say unto thee that thou said unto Peter, On this rock I will, pour, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He died for us. He took back the keys that Adam lost to, to the devil when he sinned. He says, I'll give you these keys and I'll give you power. And he's looking after us and he gives us power to look after ourselves. Amen. Proverbs 31.10 Glory to God. Proverbs 31.10 Hallelujah. So who can find a virtuous woman her price is far more precious than rubies rubies and diamonds is a fire more valuable thing on this planet and he said a virtuous woman is far more valuable than these things amen Proverbs 28 verse 1 Proverbs 28 verse 1 says the wicked flee when no one pursue it but the righteous are bold as lions meaning they're running scared for no reason but the righteous are bold as lions he's made us bold as lions Amen. 30, Proverbs 30, 30 says, A lion which is strongest among all beasts and turneth not away from any. We are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings, lord of lords, are made us in his image to be conquering lions also. Amen. Glory to God. Numbers 6, 24 to 26 says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. The Lord's face shines upon us. He looks upon us with such love and care and admiration. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 97 verse 1 says, Our God reigns. Amen. Isaiah 26 verse 3 and 4 says that he gives us perfect peace. Amen. 1 Samuel 16 verse 18 says he knows our hearts. Amen. Joshua 1 verse 9 says that he wants us to be of good courage. Amen. Revelation 7 verse 16 and 17 says that he will, there will be no more hunger or thirst. Amen. Matthew 6 31 says don't worry about tomorrow. But let tomorrow worry about itself. Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10 and 11 says, don't fear. Amen. Isaiah 45, 1 and 2 says, he goes before us and made the crooked places straight. Amen. God loves you, brothers and sisters, so much. Amen. Please do your part by just seeking him. Amen. I don't just sit here like this. Let me show you something. From 6 a.m. From, from 5.30 to 7.30, I'm on my knees praying. Then I do like half an hour to an hour worshipping. 12 o'clock, I'm back on my knees to 12.30 praying. 6 p.m. until... No, sorry. Yeah, 6 p.m. until 6.30, I am also praying again. And then I pray from 10, from 11 to 12. And then I wake up at 3 a.m. to pray for the world. That's about four, four and a half hours of prayer all day long. Plus, I worship in between all day while I'm on the street doing anything. And I keep praying in my head in tongues or I pray fervently like the Bible says, pray without season. Amen. I'm not trying to make myself look righteous. I'm just trying to show you I'll make space for the Lord to work. I don't sit and watch TV. I don't even watch, I don't listen to secular music. I'm always trying to be the Prince of the Lord. Amen. The time's running out. So there is a heritage from our God that I'm going to leave in the comment sections. I'm going to leave it pinned. Amen. But we do need to make space for the Lord because he loves us. This evidence is in the Bible. We have to love him back. 
Amen. He done his part. Let us do ours. Amen. Spend time with him. He loves you. That's what he wants from us. Is to spend time with him. Amen. Glory to God. I've managed to go over the 45, the 45 minutes. James chapter 4 verse 8. Hallelujah. Hopefully I can get this one in. Spend time with the Lord. Pray. Fast. Worship. James 4 verse 8 says, Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Amen. I'm drawing near to God. This is why he's drawing near to me. And if you draw near to him, he will speak to you as much as he speaks to me. Because the Lord loves us all the same. He don't love me no more than he loves you. He loves us all the same. The Bible says that the rain and the sun shines on the just and the unjust. He loves us all equally. Whoever accepts his love, he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Amen. You love seeing your wife. You love seeing your husband. Do you love spending time with your kids? If you love the Lord, you love spending time with him by being in his word, by praying, by worshiping, by fasting. I want you to know him for yourself, brothers and sisters. I know I didn't just get up one day and start praying four and a half hours a day and worshiping all that. No, I started with half an hour, then an hour. And then the devil attacked me with a giant snake that wrapped around me and tried to swallow me alive. I said, okay, I'll pray for half an hour. They won't attack me. I won't pray for an hour. Then this black demon came in my house. I think they call him, I don't remember what they call him, but he came to attack me. And the Lord had to send me a spiritual parachute with oil and, and fire and, and weapons to defeat him. I said, okay, I pray for an hour, you want to attack me. Now I'm going to pray for two hours in the morning then. And the more I pray to the Lord and the more I fast and I worship, I realize that I think I'm this close to God. I'm this far away from God. So I'm going to do more and do more. And every time I feel like I'm this close to God, I realize I'm this far away from God. So I keep doing more and more. Because from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from victory to victory, we keep pressing on. So we know it's not easy, but you have to train and practice yourself. It's not easy to wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. But now I can wake up before the phone even alarms. Because you have to condition yourself. You're a warrior. Amen. The king of heaven suffered violence and violence taken by force. You have to fight for our salvation and fight. We're in a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters.